Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Beowulf and I'm doing a quick content upload today just to try and cover off what is multi-threading. So iRacing has said they're bringing out the rain. Fantastic. Um, but I've had some questions in the team I run to do endurance racing. I uh, had some questions in that Discord saying, hey, you know, they keep mentioning that they're leaning towards multi-threading. They're starting to implement a whole lot of stuff around multi-threading. And the questions are, what is multi-threading? So I am a developer uh, or a past developer. I'm no longer a developer. I'm an agile coach, but I used to develop and I used to write programs using multi-threading. So what I'm going to try and do is explain what multi-threading is. Um, so let's crack on and give this a go. So we start off looking at a CPU. So all of our PCs have a CPU. And when you take that CPU and you understand how the CPU is plugged into the board, what we're going to look at is what's the impact when that CPU gets plugged into the board. So all these little pins here means it gets plugged into the board. And when you look at a motherboard, there's lots of lines that go in loads of different places. But what we're going to look at today is what does it actually mean when we plug the CPU into the board? So what we're going to do, we're going to use a railway line to try and explain that. And that railway line goes to different places in your computer. So your CPU will get data and it will try and process the data. And what it would do is it would send that data on the railway line from the CPU to your graphics card or uh, to the fan or to the hard drive or whatever it's needing to do. So we'll look at how that processes in your PC. And what we're going to do firstly is look at iRacing. So I've got a car. Uh, on Spa in iRacing, you can see here there are lots of different stuff going on. So up here in the um, banner that goes across the racing track, we can see there's dirt, there's lines where the different bits of um, card have been stuck on. You can see the, the painting, you can see it's a little bit speckled and that's trying to give it that more authentic 3D feel that it's a little bit worn and so on. You can see here on the side of the track, there's a lot of grass. Uh, the grass is at different lengths. There's the pit wall, there's the pit fence, the pit boxes, and so on. And then when you look at the car itself, you've got reflections. So you've got reflections in the car. You've got the lights, the, the brake lights are on, so they go from a dark to a light color and so on. Then you've got shadows. So all over the track, we have shadows. Where the car is, we've got shadows. There's shadows on the car itself, inside the car when you're inside. And then in the background, you've got trees, you've got houses, you've got um, benches, you've got all sorts of different stuff that's happening in the background. So what that means is that your PC has to draw all of that constantly. So it's constantly trying to get all of that and it's putting where your car is on the track, where other cars on the track are and so on. So if we look at our train line scenario, the PC is saying, OK, I need to draw stuff and we're going to pretend it's a train. And with a single threaded application, what happens is it says, OK, I'm going to need to open a new function. I'm going to need to tell that function to draw some stuff. Then I'm going to close the function. So the PC opens the function starts to draw stuff, sends it to the graphics card and says, hey, you need to open this, you then need to draw this, and you need to collate together and then show it to the user. And all of this is happening in multi-milliseconds or milliseconds as a minimum. When it does that, it's doing that currently on a single train track. So it's saying, yep, I've got one train track, that's going to go all the way up, and we're going to see how that looks. What multi-threading starts to do is, is actually as a CPU, and you may see your CPU is multi-core, so it might be four core, so quad core, it might be dual core. And what that does is, is actually this part of the CPU is a single core and that part of a CPU is a single core. Each one of those could have one train track, but also it allows multi-threading inside that core. So you could have multiple train tracks coming from one core. So you could have multiple multiplied by multiple. So what that means in essence is now when rain is coming, the program is saying, okay, I need to send this data about where the car is on the track. 
I need to also send this data to give the driver some different feeling. I need to send some more data about the grip level on track, or I need to send some more data about where another car is on track, and then I need to close it all off. Previously, each one of these would have been following each other. Whereas what happens now is instead of it being one by one by one, all of these go together. So they get decompiled, thrown across, and recompiled, and then shown on screen. So although it seems like the PC is going to be doing a lot more work, what's actually happening is with the modern PCs, they're already built to do multi-threading, and they have been for quite a few years. So all that's happening is iRacing now is leveraging that multi-threading. So what they're saying is instead of us only using a little bit of the CPU and like really ramping that one core up to 100% all the time to try and process our data, we're going to use all the different cores. We're going to try and bring it out so you get multi-threads for each core. And that's going to increase the overall output and increase the capability. But from a CPU aspect, you're not really going to notice too much of a difference. And hopefully depending on how they're doing it and depending on how much of the legacy programs need a changing, hopefully your FPS won't change too much because your FPS is going to be having to work out when you're looking at this track scenario again, how does it build the tarmac? Initially, all it needed to do is say, hey, the tarmac looks like this. It has this amount of grip level. Go for it. Now it's saying, hey, the tarmac looks like this. It's got this amount of grip level. Then it says, oh, we got rain. Now, how much water is there? What's the tarmac texture? What's the rain texture? Is it a lot of rain? Is it a little bit of rain? Is it a little bit misty? What's the grip change? I need to then also send to the, the wheel device that you're using, hey, the grip's changed, so you need to be able to feel that there's a grip change. What's the water depth? The water depth might cause aquaplaning or it might cause extra spray. Is there spray from the car in front? Is there spray coming off of your car? What is that level of spray? So all of those, instead of going one by one by one and sort of causing lower and lower FPS because now your PC is waiting to get all of this before it decides to go and do its thing, all of those would be sent together. So I'm hoping that over time that FPS should remain really high. I'm hoping that this explanation. I know it's been quite short, and I wanted to keep it short and sweet, but I'm hoping it gives those who don't have a development background or a programming background a little bit of understanding as to what does multi-threading mean. If you have a really old PC that's running iRacing, you may find that actually when the rain comes out, your PC does start to struggle. But that will be because they're trying to leverage the newer CPU structures and so on, and your PC may not be able to cope with that. So you may find that over the next couple of months, as rain comes out and so on, iRacing say, hey, the minimum spec to run iRacing has now increased because you need to be running at least a dual core CPU or something like that. But anyway, I am Beowulf. Thank you guys so much for jumping on and watching. If this um, appealed to you and you liked the, the content that you had, Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give us a subscribe. The more subscribers I have, the more content can get out to more people. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed and thank you very much. And hey, if you're a developer and you think I've explained some of this wrong, let me know in the comments and I'll put another video together and see where we go from there. Thank you all. Bail out.